action. Hello everybody on Facebook, good to see you. Great to have everyone here tonight. Uh, we're gonna be jumping into Ephesians tonight. Some cool stuff. Um, by the way, just a couple announcements. Next week is our, already, our prayer time. It's the fourth Wednesday of the month, already. It seems like we've had two months without it. Really? Oh man, I think that came fast. Anyways, well, yeah, because, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I get why you're, that's a good joke, Harry. Uh, so this <laughs> next third Wednesday, we will not be doing Bible study, so we will not be online, because we can't do the prayer time online. It just doesn't work. So we won't be online, but we will be, but please come and pray. We will have our prayer time. I invite people to come. If you know those that are hurting, sick, whatever, you know, and just come and pray, or we can just come pray for them. So again, next Wednesday is our prayer time, seven o'clock right here. Um, we are at the end of the month to let everyone know, um, this is the first time we've announced this. We are, uh, my buddies from West Virginia are coming back, uh, Brent and uh, Brent Wilmoth and Mark Jenkins and uh, Kevin Noreen. Uh, they are coming on April 28th, I believe. Is that a Friday? Somebody help me out. I don't even know. Yes, I think it's 28th is the Friday. Uh, that night, we we're actually going to do a marriage conference. So we're, they have all their wives coming with them. So we're going to marriage conference on Friday night, all right? And then all day Saturday, it's a men's conference. So we're going we're gonna to crush the men twice. No, I'm just kidding. Anyways, no, we're going we're gonna to really focus on, on marriage and, and what it means to, to be married. And we're going to do a, a really good uh, session on that. And then all day Saturday, we're going to start at 9 o'clock on Saturday and go through probably about 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon at a men's conference. We'll eat lunch together, have some snacks. But we're going to have an open time, too, in the afternoon where we'll let the young guys go play sports. We can kind of go all kind of congregate, just more of a fellowship time. Uh, we're going to have a good hour of fellowship time. But, and then one of them is going to speak on Sunday morning the 30th. So uh, really looking forward to that, be praying for that, um, excited about that. Uh, already praying for summer's best two weeks. I cannot believe we're already planning summer's best two weeks, which is the end of July, but it is already in our prayer time. So registration is open for summer's best two weeks. We already have four kids signed up for uh, that. We got some seriously planned parents, man. man. They're like, oh my gosh, it's open. They're right away. They're like sending registration. I'm like, wow. Uh, so we already have four kids, uh, but pray for the staff on that um, and everything that we're doing. So that's really good. Um, uh, men's breakfast. Be careful, men, because it is on April Fool's Day. It's April 1st. Be careful. That's all I'm going to say. That's, that's all right. Someone's... <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> well, no, as long as we cancel it, there won't be a snowstorm. We'll be fine. Um, but anyways, April 1st, April, April Fool's Day, we are doing men's breakfast. So um, that'll be good. And... Uh, you might come and no one's here, but no, I'm just kidding. Um, it'll be a good time. I can't think of anything else. Anybody else have any announcements? Nice. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this time, Lord, and I want to pray for the people that are going through so many different things, Lord, in their lives. I think of, uh, I, I think of Debbie Thompson's daughter who was just diagnosed with cancer. Lord, I pray for her. I pray for healing. We pray for Shannon Campbell. For the same thing, Lord, her cancer and the pain and, and uh, just the, the tough that she's going through, the tough times. I pray for their families, Lord, their husbands and their children. And Lord, uh, just be with those families. I pray for us, Lord. I, I pray that we would be able to learn what it means to walk in you in the midst of this crazy world, Lord. In the, in the times that we are having, uh, Lord, with uh, different things that we're reading about and seeing and wondering what this is all about, Lord. We're praying for your return. Um, it seems like it's close, but we, we really can't say for sure. But you know what? You told us that we would encourage each other with these words, that you are returning, that we are going to be with you one day. So we do pray for your return. And we pray that you would uh, be glorified in our lives. And Lord, help us to tell as many people as we can about Jesus Christ so they can come with us. Because we want no one to miss eternity with you. Lord, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. So, hey, there's a couple coming in. It's great. So, we're jumping in Ephesians chapter 4. We didn't get crazy far last week. Uh, we got to verse 17. And if you haven't seen up to this point or you haven't studied up to this point, you can study it yourself or you can go back to last week and you can look at it, okay? Um, but we are in verse 17. Now, just to kind of 
this kind of transitions a little bit, obviously. He's talking about the, the first part of chapter four. He's talking about really the unity of the body. He's telling us at the end, the last few verses here where he says in verse 15, but speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies according to the proper working of each individual part causes the growth of the body for the building of itself in love. So again, the unity of the body. And then he says, Christ is the one that holds all things together so that we are building what? We are building growth and we are growing in the love of Christ. So that's the goal. That's the, the, the thing he's trying to get us at. Now he starts getting to the specific walking. He's getting into, now that you know what you're supposed to be doing, now you know the goal, this is kind of how you do it. This is how, kind of how you live it out. This is kind of how you walk it every single day, right? And I know you guys that are here on Wednesday night at Bible, you guys all have it all figured out, but you know, you can maybe help us that don't. I'm just kidding, that's being sarcastic. None of us have it all figured out, but we're all doing it together. We're all going for it, right? I want to be Walking in Jesus more today than I did yesterday. And a year, for, uh, a year from now, I want to be stronger than I am today, right? That's the goal. But he gives us some real practical things right here on the Christian walk, okay? So let's jump in. So this I say and affirm together with the Lord that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles also walk in the futility of their mind, being darkened in their understanding excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the hardness of their heart. So let's stop there. What's that? What's sticking out to you guys in this? Hardness of the hearts. Okay. You see that in today's society. Darkness. The Christian church. The hardness of their hearts. Yeah, the yeah, like you said, in the Christian church, unfortunately, and, and, you know, it's crazy. Like, the one place you don't think the hardness of the heart would be there, but it is, right? But he's telling us, because he is talking to believers. He's saying, listen, this is what I want you to do. It's easy to look at the world and say, oh, the world, they're so hard. They're not listening. No, he's talking to us, believers, the body of Christ, right? Because he just talked about how the body of Christ is united. He's talking about the strength of the body of is Jesus. And then he says, now I affirm together. Now, and he goes through this and he says, he's talking about your hardness, right? Our hardness, I'm saying, like not just yours, mine too, as, as a believer, right? What else sticks out? He says, no longer as Gentiles also walk in the futility of their mind. What does that mean? Does, your, does your, anyone else's version say anything differently? Vanity. Vanity, okay. So what is this talking about? The ignorance. Yep. They're, it, the, really the Greek almost, it's almost like it's saying unproductive in their thinking. They're like, emptiness. I don't know, what's that? Emptiness in em their thinking. Emptiness. I keep going back to last week, a young man in our Thursday night said, I feel sometimes like I'm aimless. Like I, I don't know what I'm living for. I'm, it's almost like an archer, just there's no target. He just, he just throws it in the air, right? Yeah, Josh, we were just listening to the radio on the way here. And, uh, they were talking about young girls, particularly with Snapchat, Instagram, and uh, whatever they listen to. It, but that's typical. I mean, they, they breathe their own smoke, you know, you know what I mean? Yes. Hey, it's all about them. Everything's about them. Yes. And if, if they don't have that, and if they have it, it causes mental mental issues. But if they don't have it, they go crazy. It's like, I, you know, nobody's listening to me. Yeah. The vanity in the mind. And remember, he's saying, I don't want you to be like this, just like this. But he's telling us, why is he saying it? Because we're, we can be like this too. And he's trying to, he's warning us here. So he's saying the futility of their mind, they're, they're aimless. They're, they're not sure what they're running for. Larry? Yeah, I was just thinking about the uh, blindness of their heart. Yeah. That's the reason. And uh, in other places in the Bible, it says uh, that Satan blinds the heart. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's dark. That, and I think there's where, 
you know, again, why the word of God is so key for us is that we want to make sure that we're in the light. Because if we're not in the light, what we're going to be in, darkness. Mm -hmm. And the darkness is going to overcome us. And, and we are going to have the futility of the mind. We're going to be dark in, in our understanding. But here's the interesting, excluded from the life of God because of ignorance that is in them. This is where it's a choice. It, that's, that's what you got to see. It's a choice. And it's the ignorance. They're, they're ignorant because they're not opening their mind to what God wants to do. They have what they think. And it's like, you know, how many, how many you know, everyone wants to scrutinize the Bible, right? Do they scrutinize everything else the same way they scrutinize the Bible? They really don't. Isn't that hilarious? Like, why do I say that's hilarious? Because it's hypocritical. Like, what? So you're going to go after the Bible. You're not going to scrutinize Joe Bob down the road who said this about the Bible. Or you're not going to scrutinize, you know, anything else. Like, oh, you can't talk about evolution and scrutinize that. Why not? You, it should be, have the same scrutiny that you do with the Bible. And, and it's crazy. We Basically, what we want to do is we just want to mess with the Bible enough so I don't have to believe in it. Right? But if you actually look at the facts and you look at what it is, it, if you really seek after it, and don't just listen to, I just keep saying Joe Bob. I don't know who Joe Bob is. I'm just saying that as a, you know, fictitious, you know, this guy's out there. He doesn't know who he is. Anyways, we, this Joe Bob out there, like we just listen to him because it's kind of itching what I want to hear. So I'm just going to believe it. And he says something bad about the Bible. But are you going to check him out? Are you going to check out what, where his resources are, or where he's coming from? No, we don't need to because he says the Bible, you know, he says bad things about the Bible. So I'm just going to believe it. And it's, again, the hardest of their heart. They're not, it's ignorance. And that ignorance builds because they don't want the truth, even when the truth is told to them, right? They've got the blinders on, too. What's that? they still got the blinders on, too. Yeah. They haven't broken their hearts to the Lord. I, that's why I always thought was really cool about Paul's story when he was on the road to Damascus, right? And, and he went and Jesus revealed himself to him. You guys, you guys know that story, right? What happened to him? He went blind, right? He couldn't see. Right. And then the... The scales, like they said, there was like something like scales fell off his eyes when, when the Lord, you know, opened his eyes again. Now, they still think he actually had an issue with his eyes. They think there was some, he wasn't, it's interesting. Before this happened, he could see clearly, he thought. But now that his eyesight was a little messed up, he actually saw clear because of Jesus inside of him. Think about that. But physically, there was still, some, but the scales fell off his eyes. But everyone else... If you don't know Jesus Christ and you're going with your own understanding or you're going with the world's understanding and you think you know you're ignorant, actually there's scales on your eyes. You can't see. When he was stoned and left for dead, that might have a... That might have had something to do with it too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they stoned him and they left him for dead. That probably messed with him. <laughs> he probably had a little bit of a concussion, you'd think. But anyways, right? Yeah. The scripture says if you won't believe the truth, you will believe a lie. And they are believing lies. That's it. And the bottom line is it's still a choice that every one of us makes. Yeah. And I think so many people really want to believe the lie because they want to be their own God. Yes. True. Yeah, of course. It's and and we're horrible gods. That's the thing that's so crazy. And and again, they're blinded. So you could try to convince them, you can try to talk to them, you're blue in the face. But what he's telling us is be careful. He's not saying you go out and you get these people and make sure they don't do it. No, he's saying you guys be careful because you can fall into this too, right? Isn't that what he's, he's, it's a warning. So he's telling us be careful. He's telling us don't be ignorant because we've already been ignorant. I, you know, growing up without Jesus, not knowing Jesus for a long time, I saw the ignorance, right? I lived in the ignorance. And now it's like, I think back to some of the things I did. I'm like, what? Why was I so dumb? What, what was I doing? What was I even thinking about? How crazy. It's amazing I'm still alive, some of the stuff we used to do. And it's like, but now that it's open, now it's so clear to me. And, and yet there's still people that I know that it's still, they don't get what I'm trying to live for, or what I'm trying to do. And it's not me, it's Jesus. And, and they just don't get it. They refuse. They're ignorant, right? You know, Josh, I was thinking about this the other day. When you mentioned that bank. And that bank had somebody on the board. I was a black woman who was responsible for diversity, equity, and inclusion. If they had had somebody on that board that was a spiritual advisor, what do you think the media would say about that? <laughs> I'm serious, yeah. right? I mean, you never hear people talk about that. Right. It's, it's other stuff. 
So talking about ignorance, let's go to, uh, since, since uh, uh, someone was messing with me. Oh, Todd was messing with me earlier saying we're going to be in Romans. We're actually going to go to Romans real quick. We are in Romans on Sunday mornings. We're going to be in, starting in a, they're all good, but I love chapter 8 of Romans. We're starting that on Sunday. Pastor Tony's going to be starting that on Sunday. So if you don't have a church, please come check us out. You will enjoy it. Or you can watch online too, but it's way better being here. The fellowship. So we're going to go to Romans chapter 1, starting in verse 21. It says, For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened, just like Paul's telling us in Ephesus. Don't do these things, right? Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man and of birds and four-footed animals and crawling creatures. Therefore, God gave them over in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature, rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions, for their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. And in the same way, also the men abandoned the natural function of, uh, of the woman, and burn in their desire toward one another. Men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. And so again, he's saying that they, even though they knew God, they, they, they knew there was a God. That's what he's saying. Like, you guys know God. Be careful of where you're letting your heart go because what happens is all of a sudden you're doing things. You're worshiping animals. You're worshiping things. You're, you're doing like crazy things, right? And we think about today we do that, but they did it back then too. Remember the whole Moses thing and Aaron, right? What'd they do with that? What was that story? The gold that got thrown in the fire and jumped out as a golden calf. It's unbelievable. Aaron had nothing to do with it. He threw the gold. They gave him gold. And they, what, that's the, first of all, how about that? Here, we're going to give you gold. Make us an idol. That's what they said. We need something tangible to, to worship. And it's amazing. So Aaron had nothing to do with it. He threw the gold in there and poof. I mean, basically, he used it as an excuse to Mo I don't know what happened, Moses. I threw the gold in there, and there was, a, there was a calf. No, he made the calf, and he brought it out, and they worshiped it. But we do that today because they know God, but they're chasing things. We're chasing things, right? You think about the way we are today with, with animals. We humanize them. Listen, I have a wife that loves animals. If you know her, she loves animals, you know? But she also knows her animals. And she knows that. She loves them. Does it hurt when they die? Yeah, but they're animals. She doesn't worship her animals. Yes, you can have pets. You can do that. But listen, animals are here. Humans are created in God's image. Humans really is what we should be worrying more about than these animals. And really what's happening in our world, the animals are worried about more than anything. Right? To our detriment, we are putting animals up on this pedestal. It's the same thing that they did back then. And he's saying, you knew God, but you're worshiping these things. You're worshiping the, the creation rather than the creator. You know, what they're trying to do, and of course, we know there's an agenda behind all this stuff. It really isn't, come on, guys, it's not about global warming. It's an agenda. You know, I'm not trying to get political, but it's what it is, okay? Let's just call it what it is, Agreed. all right? But they're worshiping the earth more than man. They'd rather see man, and you hear some of them say, if we can actually get rid of people, this earth will be better. The earth was made for people, not people for the earth. Okay? It's, it's backwards. Everything, it's happening today. And it's, it's not new. It's been going on for a long time, right? And then what happens? I'm sorry, but we read it, so we got to talk about it. They started getting unnatural with each other sexually. Women with women, men with men. It's unnatural. You know? And by the way, the Bible does talk about sin. I'm not here to bash it. I'm just telling you what it is. It's what the Bible says. Now, does God love you if you're in? Yes, he loves you and he wants to give you more than what you have. He wants to give you life and he wants to help you away from sin. But we have to realize is what the Bible teaches. Now, we don't have to shun those people. We don't have to judge those people, but we have to teach it. It's because they're what? They're selfish. It's going back to that selfishness. Do you know? Now, am I selfish at times? 100%. Do I sin at times? 100%. But it's because I know God as God's revealing those two things to me. Unfortunately, sometimes he doesn't reveal it. I don't listen. He reveals it. Right. 
right away. I just don't listen all the time. And the more you don't listen, what happens? The hardening of your heart. Right? So we Christians don't need to just be pointing our fingers at all the non-Christians, but we do have to be showing them the truth of the gospel. That God wants to reveal these things and he wants to free you. What else? Anything else stick out to you on that? What we just read or anything here? So let me ask you this question. What is ignorance? Lack of knowledge. Okay. Okay. It, it is, but what do you got, Steve? I'm, I'm thinking it's, it's more like having the knowledge, but choosing not to use wisdom and applying it. Yes. So the word ignorance, you're, Gene, you're absolutely correct, is the lack of knowledge. But this word in the Greek is actually more of, they, it's not that they don't have, they know it. They're refusing because of their ignorance, because of their selfishness, they're refusing to listen to it, right? They're refusing to believe it. Yes, Harry. But isn't that arrogance? It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say 100%. Yes. Steve, did you have more? No, I... Oh, okay. I think I was he was giving you an amen. He was going, yeah, yeah he was praising it. He was preaching. Amen. Preach it. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, right? That ignorance. But, it, but again, it's that is in them, the ignorance that is in them because of the hardness of their heart. Um, we see this in Romans as well, right? The heart, you know, God says he'll harden who will harden. He'll, you know... He'll basically have mercy on who will have mercy. And we see this, but man is hard enough. Like God doesn't have to, he doesn't really have to do much for us to have a hard heart. We already do because we're sinful, right? We're, we're born with that arrogance. Right. We're born with that ignorance. We're born with that stuff. And what we have to do is be taught through God's word, through the God's people, what the truth of life is, right? I mean, I know our world's trying to say that our kids already know how to do good. How's that working out? It's not not working out too good, guys. I mean, it's really not. I'm sorry. I know that's hard to see. Spock did not have the answers. What's that? Dr. Spock did not. Dr. Spock did not have the answers. Now, that is for sure. I think Star Wars has some, but no, I'm just kidding. No, they didn't. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Harry's going to give us a joke. All right. All right. So then verse 19, he says, and they, having become callous, have been themselves over to uh, have themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity, kind of what we talked about in Romans one, right? Every kind of impurity with greediness. But you do not learn Christ. All right, let's stop there for a second. Let's talk about verse nine and they nineteen and they having become callous. That word callous. What is that? What is that word? What does that mean? Hardened. Okay. Mine says lost all sensitivity. Yes. You keep doing something and you become. No, you just grow a callus. Yeah. I mean, first you yeah, if you ever, blister, then you grow a callus. Yeah, you'll know if you touch my hands. I really haven't worked with a lot of tools lately because my hands are very soft and they're nice. And uh, but if you're uh, if you're working with tools or you're working with uh, like a hammer all the time or whatever, and you look, you know, your hands when you start playing the guitar, I'll, I'll I've I've learned the guitar like three times. I've never really kept going with it, but if you, you, you know, your fingertips will just be calloused and they'll be hard and, it, and there's almost like no feeling in it. And the more you play, the less it'll hurt actually. And that's the idea. The more you sin, the more you're in this, what's going on, the impurities is you, you become callous to it. You don't even know you're doing it. You know, go ahead. You should, you should ask Janine how well I do walking over stones. Yeah, I'm pretty amazing at it. Yeah, not at all. But, but the callousness, so they no longer feel the pain. Yes. Yeah, after a while you don't feel it. And, and after a while you're sinning, you're in it. You don't even really know what you're doing. You don't even know that you're going too far. And that's what happens is when you allow yourself to, to jump into certain things, you might think, well, I'm just going to try this a little bit. And then all of a sudden... You're way down the road and you never thought you would be there because you're in it, right? Well, drugs and alcohol do the same thing. Drugs and alcohol do exactly. So you, look for that stuff. you need more, you need more, you need more alcohol. Why? Because after a while it doesn't get you drunk anymore. So you need more of it, right? You become callous, but it, but the word in the, uh, it's, what's the word? It, um, you know, when you're drinking something and you get tolerant. tolerant. Thank you, Todd. 
All right, yes, tolerant, that's what it is. I don't know why I just said your name like that. <laughs> but anyways, let's look at another scripture. We're going to go to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, starting in verse uh, 16. It says, therefore, no one is to act as your judge in regard to food or drink or in, in uh, respect to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath day, things which are a mere shadow of what is to come. But the substance belongs to Christ. Let no one keep defrauding you of your prize by delighting in self-abasement and the worship of angels, taking the stand on vision and, and has seen, inflated without cause by his fleshly mind. And not holding fast to the heed from whom the entire body being supplied and held, or the head, I said he, sorry, head, from which the entire body being supplied and held together by the joints and ligaments grows with a growth uh, which is in from God. And so what he's saying is don't let these things, these outside things that, that are going to get in, they're going to they're gonna mess with you, they're going to defraud the message from the head, from Christ. That's the ignorance, right? And you're allowing this stuff to get in and you're not listening. But what you're doing is that this going back to Ephesians chapter four, he says, and they have been come callous having have been, uh, get, I can't talk, sorry. And they have having become callous have given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity. So these people are coming in, they're hearing the message and they're saying, no, 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 no. it's okay. It's not a big deal. There's, there's actually religions out there will say, you know, whatever you do, it's whatever you do. As long as you know, as long as you have Jesus and you believe in him, the rest doesn't matter. Is that what this is saying? No, actually, that would be a false teacher trying to tell you and get you callous and get you doing things that you shouldn't be doing. If you truly know Jesus, there should be a desire for holiness in you. There should be a walk of righteousness. And that's what we're seeing in this. He's trying to tell us to stay away from these things because now what's going to happen is you're going to practice it and all of a sudden you're going to go into impurity with greediness. What does that mean? Impurity with greediness. Wanting more. Wanting more. It's never enough. It's not just talking about money, by the way. We, greediness, we think, uh, we know we always want to turn to money. It's everything. You know, I don't have enough this. I don't have enough that. I don't have, you know, whatever it is. I want more, Right? When you get a passion for those things, all of a sudden it doesn't stop because you're not thinking of Jesus, you're thinking of what you want. Mm -hmm. And it becomes greedy. Right? And that's what Satan's looking for, is for us to allow that one foot in the door instead of looking to the Lord each day to yeah. help us through these things. Yeah, and I think, I also think too, is, is like you think about what people get caught up in, you really can't blame them because they have nothing else. They're trying to fill what they need with stuff or with sex or with <laughs> drugs or with alcohol. It's, it's not, you can't blame them. The problem is, is though he's warning us that we can fall back into these things because we know we once walked in them and it's easy to justify and fall back in. Right? So manifest them more and more and more. Yeah. Larry, did you have something? Um, I was just thinking the people didn't have good teachers, I don't think. He's talking to the whole assembly that's gotten out of whack. Yeah. Yeah, good teachers, but also the fact what we have is we today, we really have no excuse. We have the Bible itself, right? And so I think what we do, though, is we listen to people without checking. Well, what did Paul say? Don't believe me. Right? Be as a Berean. Go study. I tell you guys that all the time. Don't believe me. I don't want you to just go, oh, well, Josh said it, so therefore it's true. Please don't do that. Hopefully what this is, is as you guys are studying this stuff, it gets you excited and you get into it more because you should study to show yourself approved. Right? God wants to, he wants to mold you with the truth of the word. Right? So, so think about these things is what are you practicing? What's happening? And, and, and are you allowing yourself to go and, and, I'll tell you a great litmus test of this is if someone is calling you out on something and if you're not listening or you get, you get frustrated or you get uh, defensive, listen to yourself when someone is telling you something that you might be struggling with, right? Especially if it's someone that loves you. And I know kids have a hard time with this. None of your kids did, I know. But like, you know, kid, again, that's sarcastic, but kids have a hard time with that. Why? Why do kids have a hard time with that? 
when your parents are telling you something that you're doing wrong? Why do kids have a hard time with that? They don't want to hear it. Because they don't want to hear it. Because they're scum sucking sinners, right? And they don't want to, none of us like authority. None of us like that authority. And so when we hear it, we want to fight against it. But you know, the best thing is, listen, listen. Can I learn from it? Can I, can I, you know, I'm not saying you okay. Listen, I get, every time someone critiques me, I get that kind of like, oh no, here we go. I'm going to, I'm ready. And then, and then the Lord's just, just relax. I got something for you here. Just, just chill, you know, but yet I, I can do that. Right. So our hearts and thinking about where we're going with that. So it keeps going. Verse 20, but you did not learn Christ. So we're back in Ephesians four, if I didn't tell you that, but you did not learn Christ in this way. What way? What he just said, what he's just talking about. What are you practicing? Making sure that you're not walking in the, in the things of this world. He said, if indeed you have heard him, okay, that word heard, okay? Not saying that you just heard the word, okay? It's, it's, it's hearing with your heart. It's hearing more than just your ears. It's, it's actually deep. That, that Greek word is more than just your ears. It's actually your soul, it's, it's internally. Hearing with a desire. Absolutely. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught in him, just as truth is in Jesus. So what have you heard? What are you being taught? The truth. What's the truth? Is in Jesus. So there's another test that you can have is when someone's trying to tell you something outside in the world and they don't bring up the gospel. Like you can have Christian counselors and they're not telling you anything about Jesus. That's not a Christian counselor. That's just a counselor who calls himself a Christian. If they're not, if a Christian counselor is going to give you the word of God and let the word of God transform you and not their psychology. Now, I'm, I'm not saying all psychology is bad. Please don't, don't hear me on that. But what I am saying is if they're not letting the word transform you, then they're giving you man's ideals. And man's ideals are never going to give you the answer that Jesus is going to give you. That's right? Right? Because the truth comes from what? Jesus. It's a Sunday school answer. It's easy. Every, every answer is Jesus, right? But no, but that, that's it in this, right? Verse 22, then, or that, in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit. So then he, he talks about the truth of Jesus. And then he says, you got to make sure now that you know Jesus, that in reference, now that the old life, now that you know Jesus, the old life is like you're taking off your dirty garments. You just went on a, 90 degree day in the middle of August, you went for a run. It, it, it's basically what we do a lot of times. We go for a run, we're sweating really bad. We take our old, the sweaty clothes off and then we just put them right back on. You know how gross that is? But that's us living in sin. That's us living in sin or us going back to the sin. It's like picking up that old, nasty, gross shirt and putting it back on and the underwear and the shorts. I mean, I know I'm getting gross, but it's true, right? That's, that's you continuing to live in sin. What he's saying is I want you to take that off and I want you to lay it aside. You forgot one thing, though. You smell it first. Before you <laughs> you smell it first to make sure, right? No. But you lay it aside. You put that aside. It's a former manner of life. You take it and you're saying, no, I don't want that. And I'm going away from it. I want to lay it aside. He says, lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit. The old self is corrupted and it's continuing to be corrupted. It's not over. If you heard the truth, then you are going to lay the old self down and you're going to walk in Christ. Now you're going to struggle. It's not saying you won't struggle. But the more you walk in the newness of life, the less you'll struggle with the old self. Right? The more you want to walk in the newness of life. Yeah, it becomes a desire, doesn't it? So it's almost like the being the reborn of renewing of your mind and of your heart. Yes. It's, the, it's that... That renewing that he tells us, right? It says you mean made new in the attitude of your mind. Yeah. And that truly is it. Like it's different. Yeah. It's, it's different. It says that. What's that? Hebrews chapter 2 says that. Yeah. And, and that's the understanding, guys. It's a, it's a new purpose. And that's what he's getting at. With Christ, remember, the one who holds out, he is the head. He holds the body together. As the more I am, I am connected to the head, which is Christ, the more I'm there, the more the renewing of my mind, my purpose, what I do. Does anyone have a, like, I know I've asked this before, but I always ask these kind of questions. Does anyone have an evidence of, in their life that that has happened, like that you have actually seen change in your, or maybe somebody else's life? 
Me and my last 10 months. You and your last 10 months. Yeah, he's right. Yeah. We've seen it too. You know, you get lazy as you walk until something major happens. That's right. And then you realize, I need the Lord and I need him back. Yep. Something major happens, something happens and wakes you up, right? Mm -hmm. It snaps you and all and of a sudden you're like, what? When the blinders or whatever, it came off of me to realize, I said I never want to go back. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you've been a Christian for a long time, right? Since 78. So, so, yeah, he's been a Christian for a long time. Something major happens and it wakes you up like, man, I've been asleep. I've been sleeping. Mm -hmm. I've been in neutral. And really, you're never in neutral. No. You know, you're going back. That doesn't mean you didn't know Jesus. It doesn't mean you, you weren't a Christian, but it's like you weren't walking. You weren't w awoke. You were, <laughs> you, you <laughs> I keep, yeah, it's like you weren't, uh, like you weren't the true woke. The, the woke of the world is not woke. That's dead. That's actually waking you up into death more every day. It's amazing how, how backwards it is. Right. It is. It's, it's completely it's, backwards. Especially when you're talking about darkness. Yes. Right. But what does the world want us to do to be, but to get caught up in it? Yes. Yeah. It wants to lull us to sleep, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. It wants to be lazy. They want us to get caught up in it and take our eyes off the world. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what he's telling us is making sure to put that stuff aside, put it aside and, and, and do that. Anybody else? Yeah. I had a great conversation today with my son. Um, and, and my son, basically, somewhat similar to what Andy was saying, knew the Lord, just kind of got callous in his thinking, walked away, but he heard a wake-up call, and he is back, went with him to buy another better study Bible. Nice. <laughs> yes. yes. So, yeah, I mean, there's... Which one did he buy? He, he bought the NASB. Nice. Yeah. Nice. New American Standard Bible, in case you didn't know. Yeah. I, I, will say one, Anyways. I will say one last thing. Though, yeah, go ahead. In the sense that, you know, the Lord doesn't want us to beat ourselves up for no. our mistakes. Right. He wants to love us and, and yeah. help fix us. COVID messed this whole country up. 100%, yes. And it really took a lot of people's eyes off of, of going to church and, and, mm -hmm. and following the Lord. And, and oh, we can just watch it online. You but don't I, get the same effects. You, you know, on the other side, though, it actually woke some people up. COVID did. It actually well, woke, it, it lulled a lot of people asleep, but it actually woke some people up because they saw this and they're like, what? True. People. I had, a, I had a lot of people ask me, because this, this kind of seems like biblical stuff. Like, well, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, yeah. So, but yeah, it did. It lulled a lot of, I would say it, more of the church than anything. I, I would agree with you on that. Sure help, really. Yeah. So, you see this though, but it, you know, it's like that change, like something wakes you up. And I hope what you're hearing tonight, maybe you're online, maybe someone, you know, maybe something that you're hearing in the word of God will wake you up. It'll, it'll just, it's just something. I don't even know what it is, but you know, when you got it right, you know, it's like, you know, when it happens, you see it in your son. It's like, it's evident there. You don't, they, they almost don't even have to tell you, you know, it's like, you're just talking to somebody different. And it's because there's an awakening of their spirit and there's a hope in them. And that, that's the idea. Again, it's, it's the Holy Spirit. So according to the lust of deceit, and, they, and verse 23, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. We talked about that, right? It's the renewed of your spirit. It's the uh, renewing of your mind. It's the being reborn. It's the born again. It, you must be born again, is what, what John 3 said, right? Uh -huh. So... That renewing of your mind, waking up, right? Verse 24, and put on the new self, which is in likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. So again, a couple things. We talked about heard, we talked about truth. This renewed mind, it's, it's now that I have heard the truth, there's a renewing happening in me, right? And then it says, and put on the new self. So I'm now I've taken off that old clothing, I'm putting on new clothing. And I'm leaving that clothing behind, I'm not doing it. This new self, which is the likeness of God, now look at this, has been created in righteousness and holiness. So this new self, this new clothing is leading me to something different. It's leading me to a better workout, if you want to go back to the workout. You know, it's, it's leading me to a workout that, that is free. It's not a burden. It's something that is, is, is helping me, not hurting me. And, and, you know, when I take those old clothes off, I put the new clothes on, now I... Every, like we were talking about, everyone can see a difference. Can you can I, can people see when you're in dirty clothes or when you're in new clothes? 
right? And, and it's like, there's something. It's like, you know, you get that new shirt. I don't know about you guys, but when I buy a new shirt, I have to wear it the next day. Or even the same day. It depends on what's going on that day. Like, you can ask Janine. I just, I have to wear it. I got to wear the new shirt, right? And I, and I kind of, you know, I don't know what it is. I just enjoy wearing that new shirt. And then, you know, someone says, hey, nice shirt. I'm like, it's new. <laughs> got it at Target or whatever. You know, you got to always, you know, it's like, there's that newness. And, and, and isn't that not the same thing in Christ? When you get that new spirit, that new heart, and the Christ is in you, and all of a sudden you're, 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 you're different, and, and you want to tell people. When people ask you, is something different about you? <laughs> I'm glad you asked, let me tell you, right? Right? It shows. It shows. The sad part is us Christians a lot of times go back to sleep sometimes, though. Mm -hmm. That newness wears off, doesn't it? But here's the thing that this is saying is, his mercies are new every morning. I can have the newness every day. I can put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. The truth is what's going to continue to have that holiness and that righteousness in me. It's going to have that newness. I want that newness smell, smell all the time, right? You know, it's like in the new car, right? You get a new car, which, you know, I've been in other people's new cars. No, but, I, it's not, but you know, you've been in a new car and you're like, oh, the new car smell, right? They even have, they, they actually have uh, uh, air fresheners that are new car smell. Is it the same? No. no, it's not even close. You can't fake the new car smell, but that new car smell, you know it, right? And then it's like, that wears off after a while, doesn't it? But this isn't telling you, this, this newness doesn't, doesn't end unless you allow it to end. Seek it, go after it, find it. He's telling us these things, right? And so I want to encourage you, this newness is something that is clear. When you have righteousness and holiness in you of the truth, you know it's God and you know you have God. It's not you. You're not doing it. No, we should study, we should know, we should make sure we're not ignorant. But when you see these things happening, it's God, it's not you. Right? Who, anyone have anything to say about that? That's the renewing of the mind. Because we have learned so many old things that if we don't renew our minds, we try to do the Christian walk in the old ways. Yeah. Yeah, we, we never, we can never come to the point we think we have it all figured out. And I always go back to, uh, the story for me is when Moses and the Israelites were in the wilderness, right? And they, God was giving them, you know, the manna. And what did he say about the manna? You can only, just only get what you need for the day, right? And why? Because he had gave them new manna every day, right? And if they kept too much, the next day, what would happen? It was nasty, it was gross, it had worms in it, it was, it was bad. Why? Because he's saying, you don't need... You don't need the manna from yesterday. Today is a new manna. That's, that, that's a great example of our Christian walk. We need, new, we need the word of God every day. We need, we need his mercies new every morning. It's, it should be, I'm putting on new garments every day. If you're living on the same scripture that you got Sunday morning, you already have old clothes. You know? The deodorant's starting to wear off. You need, a, you need to take a shower. You need, you need something new, right? Well, now I'm going to say this. If you're just getting on Wednesday and you hear this and then you wait till Sunday, you're, you're not going to... It's like I tell our kids with, with soccer, and this is the hard part, and it's, there's, there's good parts of it and there's bad part about LCS, or Lyman Christian School. It's a small school, so all the kids play all the sports, which is great because they get to experience all the different stuff. They do drama club, they get experience. But they're never going to get much better if they just play during the season of that sport and then they wait to the next season to play the sport again. Right? Why is that? They lose their uh, muscle tone. They... Their coordination. They lose, you know, and then they, they have to almost start. Oh, now, again, they, they're getting bigger, so they're getting stronger. It's a little different, but they almost have to start over every single new season, right? And so if you don't do something in your walk with Christ, every, like, I, I mean, guys, I know people that, that they'll go Christmas and Easter, like, oh my goodness, like, no, that's not enough. You need the word of God every day. You need the mercies every day. You're eating old manna. 
And, and if the old manna, you wouldn't eat old manna if you saw it with worms over You're not picking that up and ch chewing on it. It's not happening, right? But yet we do that with the Bible. We do that with our walk with Christ. It's like I have a relationship. Okay, how many of you guys think your marriage would be really good if you only talk to your wife twice, twice a week? <laughs> Probably wouldn't be too great, you know? It really wouldn't. You know, and, okay, twice a year. How would that go, right? It's not a marriage. It's, it's not a relationship. But yet, oh, oh, I know. Just call her when things are bad. Just call her up when things are bad, when things are going bad. Just give her a call. I'm sure she'll be happy to help you in those times when things are bad. Because you don't really need her when times are good. Let's just call my wife when times are bad. Is that not what we do with Jesus? You know, God, you, everything's great. I don't need you right now. I don't need you right now. Honey, you stay home. I'm doing great. Everything's good. I'm good. You know, you live your life. I'll live my life. And when things are bad, we'll come back together and help each other. That's not a relationship. That's that, that's that best friend you haven't seen in 40 years. Like, that's not a, that's not a relationship. And that's why it's a lukewarm relationship. Exactly. It's a lukewarm relationship. He doesn't want lukewarm. No, he doesn't. He wants every day because he loves you that much. It's not because he wants you to be in religion. He wants you to be in a relationship. So couple things here, just heard truth, right? Renewed, righteousness, holiness, and truth again. Those are some key words to those verses. Now let's go on verse 25. Therefore, laying aside falsehood. So what do we lay aside? We laid aside our old garments. We put on newness. Now we have the new person. But then he says, lay aside falsehood. Speak truth, each one of you, with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not give the devil an opportunity. Okay, so he's telling us, obviously, don't let lies come out of your mouth. Don't believe the falsehoods. Don't listen to them. Don't live in them. I'm going to tell you, which a lot of us have done, including me at times, in these last couple of years, we've been caught up in the falsehoods of the media the falsehoods of the politics, the falsehoods of COVID. Scared out of our minds because the media tells us something. Guys, we got to be careful with what we're listening to. We got to be careful of what we're putting in our minds. And we'll watch TV and watch the news or, or scroll on whatever, right? Just watch all these things. And we're not, and the word of God isn't what we're going after. We're going after all these things. And then those are the truths that are coming out of our mouth. And there's anger, frustration. I don't know how everyone is, well, everyone is, a lot of people are angry and frustrated right now and there's an unbelievable divide. Why? Because they're listening to the falsehoods. They're believing in the falsehoods and they're not casting them away. What do you guys think? I think that um, you can also say, I think the lying too can be being fake. Yes. If you come to church and you're just fake with each other and you're, you're hurting, but you don't want to show it, so you put on a phoniness, and um, he, he's saying here, we're members of one another. Yep. Right. Like, be real. If yeah. you're sad, great point, sad. world. Be your brother's keeper. And don't, yeah, don't pretend right. that, don't pretend. You can't get fixed if you pretend. That's also a form of lying, is yeah. pretending that you're something that you're not. That's um, a great point. I wish, you know, it's hard because we don't want to be vulnerable, right? And I think the church, especially a lot of times, is the place where people feel kicked when they're down, so they don't want to say anything instead of being loved. And I'm saying church as a whole. I'm not necessarily saying here, but I'm sure people have felt that here. Let's just be real, right? Or they want to, they want someone to talk to them, but yet no one does. Or they, they're waiting, you know, for that one thing. I, I keep going back to. Uh, the story of, you know, a lady what, three three or four weeks ago now was going through something and she was struggling and I talked to her before church and, and all of a sudden I get a text from her afternoon, that afternoon and she goes, I've never met this young girl. This young girl came up to me, really little girl, and she walked up to me and she just could see that I was, there was something going on in my life and she just asked, she, I, I've never met this girl and she just asked to pray for me. She goes, it was one of the most freeing things I ever did. I, I shared everything with her, what I was going through, and she prayed over me. I never met the girl before. That happened here. And she, and she's te she didn't text, you know, it's like, I, that's the kind of stuff, guys. Like, that, that's the, the Holy Spirit. That's being real with each other. And we just don't, we don't do that enough, I think, in the body of Christ, right? 
We, we do lie. It's a great point, Laurel. Great point. The media tries to portray us that way also. Yes. They say, well, we hate homosexuals, we hate transgender and all this, but according to our church motto, we're supposed to love other people too, Christ. Yes. And, and we don't hate those people. Correct. But we're not going to condone it either. We're not going to no, sit I here agree. and say, but no, I know that's not what you're saying, Harry, but I'm just saying... We do need to love. We need to love anyone who walks through these doors. But if they come with an attitude of, you're gonna, you're gonna believe me, and you're gonna, you're gonna, you know, sit, and you're gonna bow to what I believe. We're not gonna do that. But we're not also gonna to hate on them. You know, if they come and bring distraction, they come and bring division to this place. We would probably ask them to leave. But it's not because we don't want them to be here. It's because they're bringing distraction. They can come here. It doesn't matter if they if they want to come and listen and sit and be cordial and. And have I mean, I'll have a conversation with anybody. I don't, but if they're going to fight me and they're going to come and attack me, oh, I'm not, that's not going to happen. But man, I'll talk all day long. You know? I care what you believe, but at this point, I don't come. I, let's let's kind of talk about these things. And, and that's the point. We are supposed to love them. But love sometimes is telling them no, too, right? right. And, and that's, that's the point. That's the righteousness of it. But we got to be careful of, you know, loving them to death, <laughs> You know, or loving them out the building. You know, but if they stay, they're going to hear faith comes by of hearing, hearing the word of God, and all of a sudden they're hearing the truth, and the truth will set them free. The truth will set them free. Absolutely. So then he, he's talking about this: speak truth, each one of you, to his neighbor. That's what we're talking about: truth. For we are members of one another. Be angry and yet do not sin. How do how am I angry and do not sin? Ang righteous anger is good. Regular anger is not. It'll cause sin, it'll cause hatred. And ha hatred is the opposite of love, which is God. So what's righteous anger? Righteous anger is to say to your brother, no, that's not acceptable. Right. That's not what the word of God says. Okay, yeah. We can be angry at uh, some of the politics that's happening in this country, in this state. But instead of uh, elevating your blood pressure, we sit down and pray for That's right. differences. And we love people that don't believe what we believe and believe differently politically. We love them, you know. And I can have a cordial conversation with you, right? And, and it's fine if, if we don't agree politically, you know. Right. I'm not saying that people can't be Christians. It, it blows my mind that people are Christians and believe certain things politically. It blows my mind. I don't. It's really hard for me to believe that you truly know Jesus Christ and you think it's okay to kill babies. I think that's, that blows my mind. I, I, I'm just, I'm sorry, it does. But it doesn't mean I can't have a cordial conversation with you about it. I don't have to, you know, bomb your building or, you know, burn your place down. You know, that, that's the thing that I, I don't get. Now, Christians should never be in doing that kind of stuff. And the other side, it doesn't, doesn't shock me. And why is the church here? For people that don't understand the right. name of the Lord. And we're supposed to love them too, Christ. Right. So it's the love, right? But he says, be angry, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. That's a big one for all of us. I think we use that in marriage. We're supposed to use that in marriage, right? Mm -hmm. But it's all of us. You know, make sure you're not letting the sun go down, which is basically, now, does it mean, like, I've had young couples, so does that mean I can never go to bed? Like, we all, like, what if it's 2 o'clock in the morning? I don't work anymore. Like, just relax. It's not like if you don't, you know, it's best to go to bed without being angry, but if you have to wait till the morning, it's not the end of the world, you know, but make sure you're intentional, but just don't let it go on for days because it's just going to build in your mind and it's going to be way worse in three days than it is right now. One of marriage, when you're tired, that's when you're most irritable. So you <laughs> know why I keep fighting. Yeah, because it could be bad. I, you know, I, I get sleep deprived and it gets yeah, ugly, right? I think I start laughing more when I get sleep deprived. But anyways, Jean's like, yeah, you do. But I get, uh, what do they call that? The slap happy. I don't even know what they call that. But anyways, uh, but but be careful of that. And, let, and basically what it's saying is letting time go by. Because it doesn't help you. It doesn't help you. No. Um, it lets anger build if you don't yeah. deal with it. In other words, deal with it. Don't let it sit and simmer. Because what goes on in your mind in those times when you sit and simmer? Is there ever anything good? No. no. You do. Well, and it's I, normally a case that not even has anything to do with what you're talking about or angry about, right? And, and that's not concentrating on the Lord and the Holy Spirit. Exactly. So you're going the wrong avenue. 
Yes. So talk it out. Don't get angry. Be careful of that, right? Righteous anger, I'm going to tell you, I don't have that one figured out completely, okay? So just be careful of trying to prove that your anger is righteous. And by the way, if you're trying to prove that your anger is righteous, it probably might be a little off, right? But there are certain things that are evident, okay? Well, the Lord threw the money changers out of the temple. To me, that was righteous anger. Yes. Yeah, because they were... I can't think of anything else. They were making merchandise of, of God's people. Well, I would say the church does that a lot today. Not our ch I would hope not our church. I, and if, if you ever see our church doing that, ladies and gentlemen, please come talk to us. But that's, that's not what we're about, right? But I, we do see that a lot in the church, right? Mm -hmm. We do see that. I think whatever makes God angry should make us angry. Yes. <laughs> whatever makes God angry should make us angry. That's probably the righteous anger. Yeah. Agreed. But I think sometimes we take it we can take it too far even, right? Because, I mean, if anyone had the right to be angry all the time, it was Jesus. And he wasn't ever really well, angry. You know, he, he came at him a couple of times, called him brood of vipers, and, you know, he, but he also bowed himself. Here he hit it, the nail on him. We got to pray for him. And what does the Lord say? But the battle is won. We don't have to lift a finger. Yeah, it's already so won. There, there's where it is. Just pray but we do have to stand. I think that's something that we, in the church, and again, I'm reading this book. If you haven't read it, I encourage you to read it. It's a letter to the American churches by Eric McTaxis, and I've just finished it. It takes me a long time to read because I got a lot of books that I'm reading and all this stuff, and I'm just finishing it. And he, he's talking about the church of uh, in, in 1930s, the Germ in Germany. And he's talking about how they're they were so worried about offending people. They didn't say anything. They just told the gospel, but they weren't standing up against anything either. And Bonhoeffer was standing up against it. And he was like, no, we can't be killing these people. We can't be doing this. There's no way this is wrong. And he was trying to stop it to the point of trying to almost assassinate Hitler. And it's like, the question is, is that right? I mean, he was doing something. I'd rather you be doing something than nothing. Right. And, and the majority of the churches were doing nothing. They're still being G they're still trying to follow Jesus, but because of their silence, they were watching people be killed. He used a great example of this. He said, you know, the Bible says don't lie, right? You're in Germany in 1930s and you're hiding a Jew in a Jewish person in your in your home. The Gestapo comes up to your home and says, Do you have Jewish people in your home? You know right now if you tell them there is, those people are dead. But you also know if you tell them they're not and they find out they are, you're dead as well. Do you lie or do you tell the truth? You lie. You lie. I watched the sound of music. That's what they did. Well, let me ask you this question. Let me. Where's there a story of someone lying because someone was in her house and she lied to somebody? No, I'm talking the Bible. She wasn't in the Bible. Oh, Rahab. 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 The two spies. The two spies. No, they went this way. She lied. But did God, what, did God crush her and judge her for that? No, in fact, she was saved for it. So we got to understand in those situations, we can't stay silent. We can't stay silent. And in my opinion, I'm not saying it's this. Well, it's the same. We're killing, we're killing a generation of people in the womb. The womb is the most dangerous place in America. It's the most dangerous place in America. By far. Worst thing is good people doing nothing. Good people doing nothing. It's the worst thing. All right, I don't want to keep bashing on that, but I'm sorry. It's it's hard not to stand on these things, especially when I'm reading a book like a letter to the American church. It's it's like kind of making me go, what am I doing? You know, so many times. So he says, uh, the devil an opportunity. Uh, give the devil an opportunity. He who steals must steal no longer, but rather he must labor. Performing, or here's another one with our generation. Tell me this isn't talking to our generation. He who steals must steal no longer, but rather he must labor performing with his own hands what is good, so that he will have something to share with, his, with one who has need. Is that talking about our generation? I'm talking in America, <laughs> right? Huh? Entitlement. Entitlement. Everyone wants to do something for nothing, and they and they and they and they think they deserve it, right? And and it's crazy. I, I was um, I was talking to Tony, and he was talking about something, and he was saying like how you you can go in places, and, and there's there's grown men standing on corners or sitting in benches doing nothing all day long, and, and and all the time, their whole life is doing nothing. And and what our world is doing is teaching people to use the system so you don't have to do anything. 
No, we should be working. Now listen, there's certain things in the government that we get benefits of, and I'm not saying you know you can't use those benefits, but man, the goal isn't to not work. In fact, the whole thing of the American dream where we can retire and do nothing is actually not, the, is not biblical. I'm not saying you can't retire from your career and do something else. Right. I'm fine with that. But we should not be sitting or just playing golf all the time. And I'm a golfer, right? But no, we should, our goal shouldn't be just playing golf all the time. It should be doing something for the kingdom, for the, for the glory of God, right? Mm -hmm. So we got to be careful of that. We can't steal no longer because if we're sitting around, we're really stealing. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment, so that it will, will give grace to those who hear. This one is tough, especially in upstate New York, because we are really good at brutal sarcasm. We are really good at that. I mean, it's like our language, right? I'm going to say we're dealing with that with our with the kids in our school, especially the boys uh, at LCS. And... Uh, and trying to help them understand, like, it's okay to joke around and be a guy, right? But we can't use that as an excuse to crush each other. We can't use that as, as an excuse to destroy someone who is vulnerable. We got to be careful. What is it? What's an unwholesome word? Just cussing, right? Just don't cuss. Is that what it's talking about? Putting I mean, it is, but it's not what? Putting others down. Yeah. Putting others down. Sarcasm can lead to bullying, can lead yeah, we, we've got to be careful of how we're speaking, why we're speaking, the words that are coming out. And we got to learn in certain situations. Like when I'm on, I know this might be shocking, you know, but when I'm on my brothers, my, my, my blood brothers, yeah, I, I pick on them like they pick on me, right? But I, I don't do it to destroy them. Right. I do it to a point where, you know, at, at a point, now they are harsh on me. Let me tell you how bad they are on me. But anyway, it's like, no, but it, it's different. Like when I'm, we're on a motorcycle trip. Yeah, we might, we might crack a joke here and there, but we, we're careful. Sometimes it's too far. And the other thing we got to realize is when we're around young people, they don't understand yet. We've got to be the example. You know, instead we, we crush or words are destructive. And he's saying, make sure it's, it's good for edification according to the need of the moment. Edification, building up for the need of the moment. I love that. That's a beautiful word. It's the tearing people down. And we just don't have grace for people, do we, a lot of times? And we, how about, a, how about traffic? I don't know about you guys, but, you know, like, of course, I don't get to drive much anymore. But I want to tell you, how about traffic? How are you guys with that, right? Someone beeps at you and calls you number one. Like, you know, what happens there with your blood pressure? Or cuts you off or, you know, all of a sudden... Well, I don't, that's why I don't, I, I've heard people say, that's why I don't put Christian uh, stickers on my car, because uh, probably not the best reason, you know, maybe put the stickers on there so you can be a little more accountable there, you know what I'm saying, like, but yeah, right, we, we go nuts, and we, we scream at people, like, you ever seen people screaming at each other, like, they can't even really hear you because their windows are up, but they're screaming at each other, like, what good are we doing here, other than destroying your own health by getting so angry, you know? You coach soccer must see coaches that belittle other soccer players. Yeah, and coaches that and yell. It just tears just... my heart out because you're hurting yeah. the, the way or the girl's esteem. Yeah, and all, and all joking aside, I yell, but I do not belittle our kids. There's no way. That's, that's one thing I do not do. And, and you do see that. I actually, I wish I could tell you it's just kids, but I've seen it at the college level. Oh, and yeah. it's brutal. Yeah. It's brutal. And, and yet I see parents do that. Right? I, I see people do that. It's like, what are we doing? What are we doing to destroy? It's like it's the words we say. Up, is it? No. no. But, it, it, but I'll tell you this. The coaches that do build up, mm -hmm. so much fun to be around. Mm -hmm. So much fun to watch, coach. We had this one coach. He was so funny. He was a Christian guy at West Virginia. Um, he, he wouldn't cuss. He would just make up words. Like, <laughs> and it was hilarious because he'd be mad and he'd go, Fiddlesticks! Doug, what are you doing, right? And everyone's like, do I laugh right now or am I scared? I don't know what to do. Like, it, it, it just broke down. Like, it was funny because even when he said that, like, the kid, because they knew him so much, and they really didn't know how much he cared for them. But when he said it, they respected him for it because they didn't, he didn't destroy. He taught. He would say a kid's name, and then he would show him, and he would teach him. And sometimes he screamed, but he never... He never cussed him out. He never belittled him. He only uplifted. And it was so much fun to watch. It was it was a, it was hilarious actually because the words he came up with were just 
And Sometimes, it, like, that's not a word. Whatever you just said, that is not a word, but it was funny. And it proved he didn't use, need to use foul language. No nope. third times in here, did he? No, it actually made the other coaches look foolish. Mm -hmm. It really did. Because it, it, it showed their, their ignorance. Yeah. Really, right? Anything else? I'm not even looking at time. Oh, my goodness. We're 805. Why'd you guys let me go that long? All right, let's just finish a couple verses. We're going long today, people on Facebook. I'm sorry. <laughs> Too bad. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. We got to talk about that next week. There's too much in that. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving each other. There it is. Forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. If we could learn how to do those things, obviously we'll go over this, next, uh, not next week, but the week after about the grieving the Holy Spirit a little bit. It shows that God is, is, is human, really. I mean, he's got a human, he's not human. Well, he is human. Jesus is human, but he's got, he, because we are made in his image, he's got uh, human emotions. He's got the emotions. He, we can grieve him. We can hurt him, you know, all those things. And, and so God is, is, a, is, a, is a being of, of feelings. And, and that's, that's amazing to me. It shows his closeness to us. So biggest one you got to think of this week, guys. Let's learn how to forgive each other. Let's forgive. Let's do it with tender hearts, just as Christ Jesus has what? Forgiven you. If I forgive others, what, what is the, doesn't it say that in the Lord's Prayer? I skipped that part because I don't like that part of the prayer. Lord, forgive me as I forgive others, right? Forgive our trespasses. Yeah, forgive our trespasses as we forgive others. No, Lord. No, no, no. I didn't really mean that. I mean, forgive me more than I forgive others, really, to be honest with you. Is what, I mean, seriously, right? I mean, like, I mean, if I really, if God only forgives me the way I forgive others, that's not going to be very good. He, he even says when you're ready to give an offering and you have a sin against your brother, you go put the offering down yeah. and come back and yeah. settle it with the person you have a hard time with. Exactly. Tells us don't let the sun go down in our anger. Make sure that we don't have an issue with our brother. Go, go before you bring this stuff. And now he's telling us forgive. Realize that uh, we can forgive others just as Christ has forgiven us. So let's pray for that. Father, we thank you so much for tonight. And I thank you for your word, man. It is awesome. It's hard, but this Christian walk is not easy. But yet you filling us with your spirit and giving us hope and your truth, Lord, it makes it doable. Lord, I pray that we'll learn how to forgive others as uh, you have forgiven us. And Lord, I pray that we can have that heart not to be bitter, not to be angry, not to attack, have words of encouragement, of uplifting, Lord, of, of just uh, helping people to learn to be edified because of who they are, because they are your children. Lord, they're created in your image, and may we look at people that way. Help us to do that. Help us learn what it means to walk in your ways, Lord, to have, uh, to hear your truth, Lord, to live in the renewed mind through righteousness and holiness. And Lord, may you be glorified in all we do. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you guys.